So we're starting in on Hacktoberfest this week, and I thought that um, it would be helpful if I showed you what it's like to actually go through and fix some of these bugs. So I'm going to do two videos, and I'm going to show you how to add a feature in a smaller project. And then I'm also going to fix a bug in a larger project. And I'll just show you what the experience is like in both of those. I want to focus on some of the things you need to know when you're doing this. And I'll try and narrate everything that I'm doing and just talk about, you know, writing the code. But the code is going to be almost the least significant part of what I'm going to do here because none of these changes are going to be significantly big. They're, um, they're going to give us an opportunity, though, to go through the whole workflow. So the workflow and the way you um, operate in the community is what I really want to focus on here, how to do Git, GitHub, etc. Okay, so let me tell you a story. Uh, yesterday, I saw this tweet, and it is about this uh, really cool JavaScript tool that lets you get a list of dependencies and, it, sorry, lets you get a list of the open issues in a project's dependencies. So in one of my earlier videos, I was talking about how it's, um, you know, if you're looking for something to do, you don't necessarily have to work on a project like React. You could work on React's dependencies and you're still working on React. So all the software we build is made up of all this other software, all these other open source projects, and all of them have issues. But how do you find these issues? It's really tricky. So, you know, you're not going to manually go through and look at all these. Well, here's a tool that does it. So this tool, Shoulders, is um, a command line tool. And what it lets you do is do a query and it goes through and it finds all of the issues for the current project that you're working on in the dependencies that might be, you know, something that you want to you want to work on. So I thought, um, you know, this is great. So I sent out a tweet. And I said, I said, this is awesome. I really wanted to write exactly this today for my students who are starting Hacktoberfest next week. And uh, all it needs is a way to show only the good first issues or the Hacktoberfest labeled issues. So this code is almost exactly what I want. I want a way for you to be able to go into a repository like your 0.1 release or, or something that you've built in um, 322, 422 or something like that type in shoulders and have it print out for you a list of issues you could work on. And I also put in this at the end, you know, the first rule of open source is don't write the code. It's already written. Just look for it. And this is a really good lesson for you when you think about, oh, I need to go and uh, I need to write some, pro I need to write some program. I would say it's worth spending a couple of hours looking around on GitHub to see if somebody's already written what you need or if they've written 90% of what you need and all you have to do is add a little, add a new feature or tweak it in order to do something a little bit different. So I put this tweet out and like, I don't know, an hour later, the author of the project sent me back this tweet and said, you know, the issue filter is a fantastic idea. Maybe we could add a CLI switch or perhaps improving the output format to be able to better leverage Unix pipes. So you could do things like pipe it to grep or whatever. I'll put some thought into this, but, and this is what you're gonna often see in open source projects, is people are gonna say, PRs welcome. Meaning, uh, if you want to do this, um, go for it. Like I would accept a pull request for you to do this. And I said, I might send you a pull request tomorrow to add support for this. And this is a great project. Okay, so what I thought I would do with you right now is I would, I would just do this. I would, um, add the feature, send it as a pull request, show you what the whole process looks like. But the very first thing that I wanted to talk about is the fact that the internet is full of people. So you go to GitHub and you think, okay, GitHub, GitHub is about code. Like this project is written in JavaScript and this project is made up of these files. But actually this is the work of a person and what you're going to find is that if you are willing to put yourself out there on the internet, if you're if you're willing to write things, if you're willing to write blog posts and tweets, and you're willing to get involved in GitHub, and you're willing to talk to people on Slack, that people are going to respond to you. And if you go out and you inject some positive energy into the web, you'll be amazed what you get back. Lots of people go online and they complain and they whine and they have all kinds of things that they're outraged about. And there's a place for that. But there's also a place for you to go out there and say, you know what, this is a great project. I really like what you've done here. And people are like, 
thanks. You know, like that, that feels good. I'd be, I'd be interested in accepting this feature from you. Like let's, let's collaborate on this. So when you're thinking about getting started and going out and being part of the open source community, I want you to be aware that you can, you can do this. Like you can just go talk to people and say, this is a really cool piece of software. I wish it did this and I'd be willing to help. And people aren't going to say to you, get out of here. Uh, who are you? Why are you, why are you uh, talking about my project? No, they're going to, they're going to say, this is great. Like, let's, let's see if we can figure this out. Okay. So let's go through the process. What do we have to do? So this is an example of a project that has no issues. You can see that zero open issues, zero closed issues. My guess is that this is probably the, um, this is probably the work of one person. Um, it's, you know, he's worked on it and it's not a big open source project, but it is an open source project. So the code is licensed. So here you can see he's using the MIT license. And, you know, this week we're talking about the MIT license. So the MIT license, you know, allows me to uh, do all of these things. Um, I can use it, copy it, modify it, merge it, publish it, distribute it, sub-license it, sell it. I can do all kinds of things with this stuff. And um, so I could, if I wanted to, I could start my own project. So if I, if I wanted to, I could take this code and I could go off here and I could, I could use it. And as long as I keep this license and I keep the copyright statement, so the, the above copyright notice and these permissions have to be included. So I can't delete this. So it still needs to be Matt's copyrighted material that I'm using. Um, but I could go and I could make my own project. However, I don't want to do that because what I would really like to do is I'd like to leverage the fact that there's an existing project that does 90 or 95% of what I want. This project is perfect. And somebody else is, has written it. Somebody else is maintaining it. Like you can see, he wrote the code 12 months ago, but then he's updated it three days ago. So, you know, a year goes goes by, but he's still keeping it working. He's, he's motivated by seeing that this project still works. That's great. I would be a fool to go and take this code and run away with it on my own because now I have to maintain all of that by myself. It's going to be better if I can do this as part of a community. Okay, so let's let's do this. Let's uh, let's jump in. So the first step that you're always going to have to make whenever you want to work on one of these projects is you're going to have to fork the original project here. So I could clone this. If I went here, I could get the git URL to clone this. But I don't want to do that because I only have read access to this repository. I'm not Matt. I don't have access to his repository. He could give me access, but you're not going to have a random person on Twitter shout out to you and say, hey, I'd love to work with you. And then they everyone automatically gives you read and write access to their code. That, that's not going to happen. We don't need that, actually. What we need is we just need to make a copy of this. We need to fork it. So GitHub uses the terminology fork, but what it really means is we want to clone this. So I'm going to fork this and I'm going to fork it into my personal account. I have a bunch of different um, organizations that I'm part of, so I could fork it other places, but I'm going to fork it into my personal account and it's going to make an, a duplicate copy of the Git project. And I'm now going to have two versions of this. So the original version of this, which I'll put here, uh, is Matt's, and now this is my version of it, and GitHub records the fact that I have forked this from the original. So I'm going to use uh, terminology here. I'm going to call this version of the project, I'm going to call it the upstream version, and I'm going to call this one my origin or the downstream version. So this is the source of truth. This is where the code is flowing from. This is where people are contributing code. This is the this is the upstream source of what's happening in this project. I am a downstream repository which receives changes from this, receives code from this. And what I want to do now is because I have total control over this version, I want to I, I want to get this version on my laptop. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to grab a URL. Now, depending on how you have your credentials set up on GitHub, you can either use an HTTPS or an SSH 
uh, URL. I prefer SSH because I have SSH keys installed on GitHub and it's easier for me, but both of these will work. And you can also use the, the CLI. If you've installed the GitHub CLI, this is the command that you would use. So I'm gonna grab this URL right here. I'm gonna copy it to my clipboard and I'm gonna hop into my terminal. So I'm gonna go and put it where I put all my repositories. I have one big directory called repos and I, I have you know hundreds of repositories here, all different things I work on. And the command that I'm gonna run is git clone and then that I'm gonna paste that URL. And you can see that the URL ends in .git. So I'm not gonna clone this URL. This is a URL which is meant for working with um, you know, a browser, it's an HTTP, it's for, it's a website. I don't want a website, I wanna clone the Git database. So I go here and I'm gonna clone this. It clones it into a directory called shoulders. So now I'm gonna have shoulders and you can see that I have the same code that is up here. So I have a .git directory the .git directory has all of the um, blobs and trees and commits, all of that information is here. If I were to run git log, we could see what's going on here, the last thing that happened, version 2.0.0. And if we go back in time, you can see there's only a few commits, like here, uh, git log. If I look at the commits in one line, you can see that that's how many commits there have been to this tree, um, 17, okay? So, you can see that we are, our head is on the master branch, which is also um, where version 2.0.0 is currently sitting. And that's what was, that was the most recent update. You can see version 2.0.0 was done three days ago here. All right, so what's the next step after we, um, we fork it, we clone it. So now I have it here on my machine. The next step is I need to do my work in a new branch. So when it comes down, I'm automatically on the default branch. Now the default branch could go by many different names. So the default name that Git uses is master, but as I've told you, there is a movement to try and move away from master. So you're gonna see people using things like default, main, trunk, you'll see other uh, words being used. And so what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I don't put my changes on the main branch for a project. The reason I don't wanna do that is because that's where the changes from the upstream project are gonna go. So what I wanna do is, so imagine there's this line of commits that's going like this. The line of commits, if we do a log, is it looks like this. This is the line of commits. And when a new version comes out, it's gonna go along this line. So the master branch is saying, this is, this is the main line of, of development on this repository. My work does not go there. What I wanna do is I wanna branch off to the side. I wanna do my work over here and eventually it'll get merged back in if the project accepts it. So I'm always going to break off from the main line of development whenever I do my own work. Okay, so what does that look like? So I'm gonna say git checkout dash B. So remember, we said that if you wanna make a branch, you can say make a branch and this is the name and then after you do that, you would have to git check out that name. So you have to do two different commands in order for this to work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say git check out dash B, and in one command, I'm going to create the new branch and check out that new branch all at once. So I'm gonna say git check out dash B, and then I have to give it a name. What should we call this name? Well. Often what you're gonna do is you're gonna be working on an issue. So you're gonna be working on issue one, two, three, four. So if, it, if I was doing that, I would say issue one, two, three, four. But we don't have an issue. We don't have an issue here. And actually I should say something about this. Do I need to file an issue before I create this pull request? So there's no firm rule about this. Uh, in, in my case, I've already had a conversation with the maintainer of this project on Twitter, and he said to me, PR is welcome. So I take that to mean, um, if you wanna send me a pull request, I would accept a pull request, that's fine. But a lot of projects don't want you to send in a pull request until there's been some sort of conversation about how this change should happen. So it's usually a good idea to start from an issue because you're gonna have a community of people 
who want to discuss it. They want to go back and forth and they might decide, you know what, we don't want to do this. So the discussion ends with no pull request. It ends with the community agreeing, we're not going to go in this direction. We're going to do things differently. So because I'm working on a smaller project, I am going to take the risk and I'm just going to do a pull request. But be aware that that may or may not be the right move for you to make. And when I do my next video and I work on a larger project, you'll see you'll see a different approach uh, when I work on um, on another project that does things differently. OK, so what should I call this thing? I can't call it issue one, two, three, four. What I really want to do is I want to add the ability to work with labels. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, call it support labels. So it's a descriptive name that makes sense to me. I'm adding this feature to support labels. So that's what I'm going to call it. So the name is meaningless. You can call it whatever you want. So now if I look at git status, you'll see that I am on the branch support labels, nothing to commit. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up, um, uh, my repos here's shoulders. I'm going to open this up. And I've got the project open. Now this is a project that's written in Node.js. So if I look in uh, package.json, you'll see that there's a number of dependencies that I need. So actually, sorry, let me switch this here so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, I have in package.json, I have a number of dependencies that I need. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna install the dependencies that the project needs so that we can do our work. And it looks like the main uh, binary is cli.js and the, the, the main module is index.js. So cli.js, all it's doing is basically running index.js. And um, index.js has all the code. So this is really where, this is really where I'm gonna wanna do do my work. Okay, so the project is installed. So how do we run this project? So it says if we go back to the readme, it says you can quickly view a list of open issues on an open source project usage, go into the directory and call npx shoulders. So npx is a way to run a, uh, a command that's uh, on npm, it'll download and execute it all in one step. So because I want to run this locally, I'm just going to say node cli.js like this. And it works. So you can see that it is printing out a list of all of the um, issues that are open in the dependencies for this project. So for example, this project uses node fetch. So it's printing out a bunch of um, issues that are available here. And you can also see it says labeled with bug, labeled with bug, labeled with question, labeled with help wanted. So it seems to have some knowledge of labels already, which is good because maybe I don't have to do very much work. Um, okay, so labeled with greenkeeper. And sometimes we get no issues, no issues. Um, Cool, okay, so we've got the dependencies installed. We've got the code open. We're ready to figure out how this thing works. Okay, so this code is, uh, where does it begin? Probably, yeah, right here. So this code starts out, it reads the package.json file uh, prints out a bunch of loading and then it calls this function load issues and it passes in the locations of all the package.json uh, files. Okay, so load issues is probably what I want. So load issues is a function here, an asynchronous function. It, uh, what does it do? Paths. 
so it's extracting things like the name of the project, the repository name, it gets a URL, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and then it does a it does a fetch. Okay. So it's using um node fetch, node fetch to um simulate the fetch API on node. And it looks like they're using uh, the GitHub API. So the GitHub API is a REST API that lets you format a query as a URL. And so you, you basically hit this API with um, the name of the user slash the name of the project slash issues. And then you can also specify how many issues you want per page. And that issue count looks like it's hard coded at 15 currently. Okay, so I have worked with the GitHub API before, and the documentation for it is really good. And uh, what you can do with the GitHub API is you can, you can pass in additional parameters on the query string. So for example, you can see here that this code is passing in the number of results per page, and that's what this is right here. Per page is an integer, and it, it gives you the results per page, the maximum is 100. So it's being set to 15 right now, maximum is 100. Uh, what I wanna do is I wanna add support for labels like this. So labels is a string, it's a, it's a list of comma separated label names, for example, bug, comma, UI, etc. Okay, so let's try this, what if I, Whenever I'm going to whenever I'm going to make changes in an open source project, the first thing I always want to do is I want to do the simplest, most naive change that you possibly can do. Don't try and do something. Don't over engineer it. Just see if you know. Test out your theory and see if you can get this to work. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start by adding in another parameter here. I'm going to say and um, let's see labels is equal to, and I'm gonna put in, let's just put in the label bug and see what happens. Bug. I'm gonna save this and I'm going to rerun the code. So now I get a lot fewer results, which makes sense. And uh, I get one bug here, so labeled with bug. Up here, I get node fetch, bug, 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 TypeScript, bug, 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 et cetera. So this is good, this is working. So we know that we've got the right, the basically the right thing happening here. So here's an interesting thing I'd like to test. What if I also put TypeScript in here? So what if I said labels, because it says in the API that this is a comma separated list of names. So what if I said comma, TypeScript, what would that do? Rerun the code. So now we only get one bug back. This one right here, which has TypeScript and bug. So it looks to me like labels is and not or. So you're saying it's got both bug and TypeScript. Uh, okay, what if we did... Um, well, let's let's um, let's see if we can add this in because I know this works, but I don't. <laughs> this is not going to be good enough. Like I can't I can't put labels equal bug in here because it's going to break the way that the code currently works. So what I need to do is I need to add a way to accept command line arguments. And if, as I'm scanning through this code, it doesn't look like. And if I look at the readme. There's no mention of command line arguments here at all. So that means that I'm gonna have to add them. There's no, there's no module for working with command line arguments. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a project that I've used before called Yargs. And Yargs is really nice because it lets me, here's an example right here. It lets me basically pull in yargs and work with this thing called argv. 
And then argv is going to contain, like if I define ships, ships is going to be available on argv. And it's also intelligent enough to figure out the type. Um, I can use an equal sign and I can, so this should work really nicely for what I want. So step one, what I have to do is I have to add YARGs to this project. So I'm going to install it, npm install. And I need to make sure that this gets saved in the dependencies list. So I'm going to say npm install dash dash save. And I'm going to um, I'm going to what do I want to do? Yargs. Now this is interesting. It looks like he uses yarn and not npm. So I may need to update this yarn lock file. That may be feedback he gives me because I don't know. I'd have to look up how to do it because I don't use yarn that often. So anyway, I have, I have yargs installed. Let's go use it. So the way that I use yargs here is I would say const argv equals require yargs. And I noticed that he's using semicolons, so I'm going to use semicolons. Whenever you're working in a project, you want your code, your changes to look as much like the changes in the project or as much like the code around you as possible. So it's a really good idea to read up and down through the code and make sure that what you write looks like what the author is doing. Okay, so I have, I have argv. And what I need to do now is I need to create a URL depending on the result of these labels. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, He's writing lots of little functions to do things here. So I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to write a function. I'm going to say const uh, github URL is equal to build URL. And I'm going to pass in the information that I need. So I'm going to pass in info. And it looks like this issue count is global. So I'm not going to bother passing it in because I can access it that way. So I'm going to I'm going to get the URL like this and then I'm going to put the GitHub URL here and I'm going to get rid of this. And I'll save I need a comma. I'll save that. Okay, so now I need a new function to allow me to uh, so this is going to be function build URL it's going to take um, info and I either need to deal with the labels here or, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pass the labels in right here. I'm going to say argv.labels. I'll pass them up. So I'm going to say um, argv.labels and yeah. That's good enough. Argv, sorry, I'm passing argv labels in like so. So I'm gonna pass the labels up like this. And here's what my URL looks like right now. So I'm gonna say const URL is equal to this URL right here. So that's the original URL. And now I'm gonna say um, if, if we have labels, um, or let's say if, yeah, let's start with this. If we have the labels, then what do I want to do? Well, my goal is I need to basically um, produce something that looks like this, labels equals A, B, C. And if any of these have spaces in it, like if this had a space, uh, C, D, if there was a space here, I need to um, I need to encode that so that it would work on a URL. Okay, so let's say um, if this is the case, then I'm going to um, I'm going to say if labels I'm going to return um, 
the, the current URL followed by, uh, I need to encode these and clean them up. So let's do the simplest thing first. So it would be um, and labels equals, and I would say um, encode URI component labels. Otherwise, we'll just return the URL as is. Okay, so let's do that. And the other thing I notice when I look at these, when I look at this GitHub issue, you notice how in this list, there's no spaces after this. So let's, um, like if I have, if I have, um, if I have spaces on these, I'm gonna have to get rid of those. So what I think I better do is I better take um, labels and I'm gonna say uh, labels is equal to labels dot replace. I wanna replace um, any amount of white space followed by a comma followed by any amount of white space with just a comma. So I'm going to say here, um, remove any extra white space around the commas, and then I will create my URL like so, and I will return this. Uh, OK, so let's see what this does. So I should be able now to say node cli.js. If I don't do anything, it should do what it did before. So that's good, I didn't break the code. However, if I say um, labels and I say bug, it should only show me labels with bug. And it does, bug, bug, bug. That's good. Bug, 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 bug. Okay, so what if I do, um, what if I have spaces in here? So if I say bug, comma, help wanted, like that. So this should give me, yes, bug and help wanted bug and help wanted, that's interesting. So the case doesn't matter, bug and help wanted, that's good. What if I put in spaces, what will that do? So that's good. And let's just check if I need to do this because maybe I don't. So if I do it with spaces like this, no, I do need to do it, that broke. Uh, now it doesn't, it, it obviously is using the space as part of the, of the label, so that's no good. So we need to remove, we need to remove that. And um, so now that should work, it does. So what if I said um, node cli.js labels Hacktoberfest. There is one. So there's actually one in Yargs. So they want to improve test coverage in Yargs. And so there's, there's a bunch of people working on this and you could probably get involved in this too. So that's really interesting that we, we've already found a bug we could work on. Or if I were to say, um, what if I said labels equals good first issue? Now it comes back and there's a couple of them in node fetch that we could, we could actually work on. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so one other thing that I'm not sure about, what if I said labels is one? Okay, yeah, that throws an error because labels.replace is not a function. So this is only gonna work for strings. So what I should do is I should say if labels, what if I say if um, t 
type of labels is equal to string. So that doesn't break anything. And if I say labels equal bug, now it works with bug. And if I don't put anything, great. So I'm going to put a comment in here. Um, allow um, passing a comma separated list of labels. like so. And I notice in this code, he doesn't use any vertical white space. So I probably, I like vertical white space, but this is not my project. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean, I'm gonna pull that up so that, um, okay, that works. Now, at this point, I'm almost done, but I really should think about this change, not only in terms of the code, but I also should think about the documentation. So he has documentation in the readme file. And so this readme file looks like, um, looks like this. So, He's got usage information, and I could probably put the extra bit that I want right here just before Y. So inside usage, um, I'll put in another section, um, and I'll call it, um, he had a term that he used for it, label filtering, is that what he said? Issue filtering. Okay, so filtering you in addition. So let's say in addition to um, quickly view. Okay, in addition to listing all open issues, you can optionally uh, you can optionally include a comma separated list of comma separated list of um, labels to use. So and now let's give some examples. So in markdown, you can see here um, when you put a code block, you put it in three back ticks and then you put the name of the programming language for formatting it. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. So this is like bash shell scripting. So I'm gonna say um, npx shoulders labels. Um, let's say I want bug or I got to show the different ways of doing this. So you can optionally include a comma separated list of labels to use. For example, to see only issues with the uh, bug label. And then I'll say you can also include multiple labels, which will be um, You can also include multiple labels, for example, um, to see only issues with um, bug and good first issue. then I would do npx shoulders labels equal bug 
comma good first issue like that. So if I save that, let's take a look at this preview now. In addition to listing all open issues, you can optionally include a comma separated list of labels to use, for example, to see only issues with the bug label. Uh, let me change this wording uh, with bug label. Or to um, include multiple labels. You can do, or to include multiple, you can do good first issue. Okay, that's good. Perfect. Okay, so at this point, I think I'm done. Uh, let's see what we have, let's see what we've done. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say git diff because I want to see all the changes that I've made. Actually, let's start with git status. Git status shows that I have changed one, two, three, four files. So this file, my package dot, uh, my package lock JSON file is not updated, but package.json is. Um, I should probably find out how you, how do I update yarn.lock? Run yarn install or just yarn. So what if I just do, what if I just say yarn? And if I say git status, Okay, now that's better. So now the yarn lock file has been updated, the package JSON has been updated, index readme, etc. So let's take a look at what we've done. So we made these changes to the readme. We made the following changes to index.js. So whenever you are going to send your code up to a project, you always want to go back and read what you've done. So you don't want to have any um, you don't want to have any code any weird things with um, extra extra code that you didn't mean to change. Um, the only thing I notice here is that Prettier has wrapped this in uh, has changed this line of code, and I think he's using Prettier. But let me confirm settings. Yeah, he is he is doing that. He's using Prettier in VS Code. So I'm gonna leave this and see what he says because I didn't change this, Prettier did. It, it auto formatted it. I'm calling my function and I'm using the URL that I get back. I've added yargs here and also the um, dependencies have been updated in the yarn lock file based on the changes that I've done. Okay, so at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add these files to a commit on my branch. And um, what you don't wanna do at this point is what I see a lot of people doing, they do this, they do git add dot. So that in other words, they say git add everything. Now, if I do that, the problem is it's gonna put all four of these in, which is what I want, but it's also gonna add this file, which I don't want, the untracked file. He doesn't have a package lock.json file in here, so I don't wanna add one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna manually add the readme file, the index file, the package.json file, and the yarn lock file, like so. And I'm gonna do git status, like so. And now I'm ready to commit. So I'm gonna write a commit. I'm gonna say git commit, dash M, I'm gonna say add support for labels, um, command line argument with docs. And I'm gonna press enter. And so now things look like this. Uh, this is where I was before we started. 
this is where I am now. I've got a new commit on here. This is where my head is and, and I've, I'm supporting labels and master is here. So what I want to do is I want to create a pull request. So I'm going to say um, git push origin support labels. So we haven't talked a lot about remotes yet. I'm going to talk about those in coming weeks, but I want to basically, I want to send everything to my origin and I'll just show you what that means. If you look at my remote, I have one remote that is defined and that remote is my repository, my Git repository. So what I'm really saying here is I'm saying Git push to this repository and what am I pushing? I'm pushing uh, this branch support labels. That's really what I'm saying, but I'm usually not gonna wanna type out the whole URL, so I'm just gonna say origin. And so origin is where you cloned from on GitHub, like the original one that you put up. Git push origin support labels and press enter. So it's gonna push that up. It's gonna make a new branch and it says, if you wanna create a pull request for this, go here. So I could go to this URL here, but I'll show you what I could also do. If I go back to GitHub, if I go to my repository, you see that there's a new section on my repository here and it says compare and pull request. So I could click on this. If I go here to the main one, you see that there's also a button here. So on both of these, it doesn't matter which one I go to, GitHub sees that those two things have something in common that could be pulled from one to the other. So I need to make a pull request, a pull request because I don't have rights to put this code into, into the repository. So I'm going to click on create pull request. And it says that I am going to send my support labels code up to the master branch on the upstream. And you'll see if I scroll down, it's gonna show you all of the changes that I've made. So these are the changes that I'm asking to be accepted into the project, like so. So I'll write a note. Now the first thing I'm gonna do when I write a note on the web is I'm always gonna try whether I'm writing a blog post or something on GitHub or documentation, I'm gonna try and connect things together. So we had a conversation in this tweet right here and he responded right here. So I'm gonna to link to his tweet. So back in my pull request, I'm gonna say, Following up on our conversation. So I'm gonna use Markdown here to do this. And if you're not familiar with working with Markdown, um, you, can read, you can read about GitHub Markdown syntax, but basically when I click on the preview, you'll see that this is now a link. So this is like writing, um, you know, a href equals this and our conversation like that, only in Markdown, I write it like this. Following up on our conversation, I've added support for passing a comma separated list of labels. This uh, will allow users to query for things like um, I've also added a um, updates to the docs and included um, YARGs Uh, as a dependency, I'm not sure if you have a preference for some other CLI arg module. And then because this isn't my project, I'm just going to say thanks for considering this. He doesn't have to take this code, um, so we'll see what he does with it. He may ask me to make changes. Um, I don't know, so we'll we'll see what he does. Um, but 
Before you press create pull request, go back and read through everything and make sure you're happy with it. Make sure you don't have typos, make sure that you don't have mistakes in your code, make sure that it looks here exactly the same way as um, it looks, you know, like what you're expecting. And I'm happy with this. So I'm going to create this pull request. And there it is. So now when you go to the project, you'll see that there's one pull request listed, add support for labels CLI arg with docs. And here I've got all of my information that I wrote. And you can see that if I click on files changed, it shows all of the changes that I made. So what I'm anticipating will happen is he will come back and say, can you make the following three changes? Or can you modify this to also do X, Y, Z? And this will be the starting point for us to be able to do this work. Okay, I'm gonna stop this video now because we managed to fix a bug. Well, in this case, add a feature from start to finish. We did it in less than an hour and we could have done it a lot faster if I wasn't rambling on the whole time telling you how to do this and that. But I wanted to show you that it's pretty easy to do this. Um, in the next video, I'm gonna show you how I would fix an existing bug in a larger open source project and just show you the difference when you're working on a bigger piece of code.